Let's discuss the palette dock here on the right hand side where we have a series of default palettes. We're going to go a little bit deeper into them today. Before we get more into these palettes here, let's first go to the top pull down menus and look at the palettes pull down menu. The palettes pull down menu shows every palette that is available to us as users of Form Z. And in here we have several that are checked. Those are the ones that are displayed here on the right and we have several that are unchecked which are not displayed by default. You can customize the visibility of palettes for day-to-day -day work, but also on a project-by-project -project basis or even on a session-by-session -session basis just by turning these on and off. So depending on the work that you're doing, you may want to take a look in here and get more familiar with what palettes are available to you. Today we won't be going through every single one of these, but we are going to cover how palettes work and what some of the main options are that you'll want to be aware of. So from the palettes pull down menu, any one that you want to make available, for instance, the hatch palette, if we select that here, the hatch palette will just show up in the UI and then you're free to drag that wherever you want on the screen. If you have additional monitors connected to your computer, you can drag these palettes off and place them over there as they are not tied to the main UI window of the Form Z interface. For the purposes of this video, we're going to assume that you only have one screen and that you're limited to the real estate that you can see inside this window. Just like you turned a palette on, you can also turn a palette off by unchecking it, selecting it again from the palettes pull down menu, or you can simply hit the little close button in the menu bar of the palette itself. The other option that you have in each palette is the ability to collapse it down so that it doesn't cover up what's going on behind it. And you can imagine if you had a bunch of these palettes on the screen all at the same time, they really would obscure what's going on behind. So this is a handy way to just collapse them down. Now another option is to actually place them into the palette dock here on the right. And so you can drag them and place them in here and drop them and then they will show up inside that palette dock where they can be in a little bit more of an organized fashion. So again, the collapsing works in there as well. And if we collapse all of these palettes down that are visible by default, we can see that it's actually really easy to then change the order of those by dragging and dropping. It's a little bit easier when they're minimized than when they're fully open to get them exactly where you want them. Once they're in the palette dock over here on the right, you can also pull them right back out. So if I go back down to that hatch palette, I can grab its title and drag it out. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is you'll notice a little eject button right here next to the collapse arrow. And if you click that, it just ejects it right out of the palette dock. And then you can freely move that around the screen and you can expand those and make them as big or as small as you want. And of course, collapse them just to keep your UI tidy. One of the palettes that is not shown by default, but I think is very useful, is the inspector palette. And in our tool options, we have a button here to launch the inspector palette. It is also found under the palettes pull down menu as the inspector. So two ways to launch that one. One thing that is key about this palette is that it actually has four tabs within it that really have to do with the object that you have selected. So right now I'm on the pick tool and if I select one of my objects or if I select multiple objects by using a crossing window, we'll actually see here that the information that is shown in the selection tab is updated depending on the selection that's been made in the main model. So if I click on one object, we can see here that one object has been selected. If I select five objects, we can see that five objects are selected. If I click on the info tab, it gives us a little bit more information about the types of objects that we have. So you can see here it says object type, model type, tells us whether they're clones, whether symmetry has been turned on for those. It tells us what the topology is for each object selected. And again, if I just go back and just select one, for example, that information all updates depending on what that selection is. And because these objects are the same, the information won't change between each one of them other than the material that's been assigned. So if I go to the attributes tab here, we'll actually see that the material attribute will change depending on which object I have selected along with the name of the object itself. Now it's worth noting that you actually can update the name of the object itself in here. So if you wanted to be a little bit more declarative about what each object is, I'm gonna call this one a white cube. And I'm gonna click on this one and call this my purple cube and so on and so forth. The nice thing about that is 
that then is reflected in the object palette over here on the right. And so if I'm ever looking for my white cube from this list, I can just click on the little check mark here and it will highlight the object in the scene itself. And because I have the inspector palette open, it pulls that open and I can see the attributes of that object. Other options that we have available to us here in the inspector are that we can lock that object, which would be the same function as clicking the lock icon over here in the object's palette itself. You'll notice that when I now select that object, it doesn't highlight in the modeling window, and I don't get to see its attributes in the inspector, and that's because it's locked. I really can't do anything to that object, or if I go back to my purple object, if I click on that, it then highlights that object in the modeling window and shows me the attributes for it. There's various other controls in here. We can tell that object whether to cast and receive shadows. We can tell it to render as shaded, or if I uncheck that, it will actually render it as a wireframe object. We can tell it whether or not we want to see silhouetted edges, so the dark edges around the profiles of these objects is part of the shaded work display mode. And so, if, again, if I click on that object and tell it to show the silhouette edges, I can do that. I can also see independent object axes, which show up in the centroid of the base plane of that object in the case of these cubes. And we can also turn on if we want to see the face normals or not. And those show which direction each polygon or each face of the object is pointing, which can be useful when trying to diagnose problematic objects or polygons on objects. Lastly, in the Attributes tab here, we can exclude objects from clipping planes. So what I'm going to do here is expand my Views palette and click the shortcut to go to Clipping Planes. And I'm going to add a clipping plane to the scene. And now this clipping plane, will we'll see that it cuts through all of these objects, which can be very useful when we're doing modeling. I'm going to once again select my purple cube and tell that to exclude from the clipping plane. And now when I move my clipping plane through the objects, you'll notice that that object is not getting clipped by that clipping plane. If you wanted that full geometry to reference while you're clipping through other objects, that could be a useful option that's found in the Attributes tab for that object. When I uncheck that, is once again being clipped by the clipping plane. It's worth noting in the attributes panel here that there is a category pull down menu as well where we can look at other attributes that are assigned into different categories. So we can look at the smooth shading category, we can look at the analysis category, and one for cross sections where we can set custom colors for clipping planes and cross sections when they clip through objects. So it's worth going through here and seeing what your options are. Lastly, we have the parameters tab inside the inspector. And before we jump into that, I'm going to deactivate the clipping plane just so that it's not visually confusing. Click on my object and click on the parameters tab. And parameters have to do with parametric objects. So you'll notice here that we have a height, length, and width for this cube. And this is because of the modeling type that I used when I built it. So if I went back over here to my rectangle tool, and you can see from my options, I can choose 3D extrusion. And if I click and drag and build a new cube, this cube also has parameters associated to it. Because I just modeled that cube, I see these controls in the object buffer of that object. If I deselect that cube and then select it again, those controls don't show back up. Well, if you want access to those, you go to the Parameters tab of the Inspector and click on Show Controls. And that will work for any object that still has parametric attributes. What that means is I can click and drag on those handles to readjust my objects in a parametric way. Or I can go into the parameters themselves and update those attributes. So if I wanted the height to be double, like 20 feet, I can go ahead and type that in and you'll see the cube updates in real time. And I can also change the length and width. Now sometimes those visual controls get a little bit complicated here in my scene. So again, if you select an object, you can also hide those controls. So that goes on an object by object basis. Now, as discussed in an earlier video, in the project settings, we can actually change the behavior of the lights, layers, and objects palettes. And in these tabs across the top here in the lights, we can see highlight picked and show color are still turned on because those are on a project by project basis. And if I go into layers, we can see that highlight picked and show colors is on. And objects, highlight picked and show color is turned on. What that means is if I click on an object, it will highlight it and show the color of those objects in the palette itself. 
And we'll also see here in the layers palette, if I expand that out, that that layer is highlighted when I highlight an object. Remember here that layer colors are assigned in the material attribute for the layer itself. So every object on the layer that is assigned this material override will show that color, and that's when the color shows up in the layers palette. A couple of other options I want to go over really quickly that were found in that preferences dialog because they relate directly to these palettes are keep lines tightly spaced and show vertical separators. Show vertical separators is pretty obvious. What that does, it's actually going to draw lines in our lists that will delineate between columns. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We can now see these very faint lines that are delineating the columns. And if I go back into the preferences and turn on the other option, which is to keep list tightly spaced, this works really well if you have small screen real estate to deal with, where it will actually tighten up the horizontal spacing of these lists to give you a little bit more to work with on a smaller screen. In this last palette, which shows up in our list over here, we actually have those shortcuts that I've referenced a couple times. And you can see that this is a, just a quick way to keep a tidy UI on the screen without having to go to the palettes pull down menu to select those. Now, one of the nice things in the very bottom of the palettes pull down menu is the ability to hide palettes completely, which you may want to do if you were presenting a 3D model to a client or if you just wanted to get rid of all of the extraneous UI of Form Z and look at the model in isolation. So I'm going to click that right now. We can see now that I can see is my model in the main modeling window and all of the UI elements are gone. Again, just go to the palettes pull down menu, scroll all the way to the bottom and uncheck that and all of our palettes come back. And finally, if you ever get to the point where your palettes are too cluttered or you can't find one for any reason, maybe it got lost on another monitor under another window or something like that, you can always go to the workspace pull down menu and you can reset your workspace back to the default and that will put all of the palettes back where Form Z started with. We'll get more into workspaces in another video. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to get notified when new videos are released on this channel, click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell icon to get a notification when new videos are released. See you in the next one.